Hello everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we are going to work on designing a uh, organic form, um, an owl, basically a pretty simple um, object, but it's gonna use a lot of tools in Rhino and we're going to be able to uh, create something organic um, and I'm gonna take you all the way through to the rendering process as well. So let's go ahead and start off a new file. My template is set up so I know I'm working in large object inches. Make sure you are working in large object inches for the beginning of this. And I'm gonna maximize my perspective window here. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start off with a sphere and I'm going to tweak it a little bit and add some details and, um, and we'll have some fun this way. So let's go ahead and type in sphere for our first command. Up here, paying attention to the command line, we're just going to start the sphere at the zero point. So I hit zero, enter, and I wanna do a four inch diameter sphere. So I'm gonna hit D for diameter, enter, and go four, enter. And that should be a four inch object. We can see one, two, three, four segments there. Okay, so let's switch it out of perspective. Remember, if you have a Mac, you right click anywhere and it'll bring up this little window. Shaded is what we're gonna go to. And you can see um, we've got ourselves a sphere. Next thing we wanna do is we wanna look at some control points, some areas that I can manipulate this object as if it was a piece of clay. So I'm gonna go points. on, enter. Click on the object, enter. And you can see that now this little box comes up that is giving us some areas that we can manipulate. Um, however, it's not enough. I can't do very many details with it. Uh, if I pull up just this corner, you know, it just kind of tweaks just that little spot there. So let's go ahead and rebuild it with more control points. So I'll type in rebuild, select the object to rebuild, enter. And I'm going to use these parameters, 12 up, 12 down, degree three, three. Just copy the same thing I've got here and you'll get the same result. And I hit okay. Great, so now we've got more control points and that gives us, you guessed it, more control. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to a, a, a top view and I'm gonna kind of zoom down on it and I'm gonna pick points. I'm going to pick one point right there and then on the matching point on the other side right there. And then I'm going to switch back into perspective because I wanted to make sure, yep, okay, because sometimes you grab by mistake the points on the bottom. So I did grab the points on the top. If you didn't do that right, you can even just come up here and click, shift click to select the two. And now I can pull up using the gumball some little ears for our owl. Okay. So that's the first little, uh, little bit. Um, and then what I wanna do next is click on the whole owl and I can kind of manipulate it a little bit. Maybe I'll scale down a little bit from the bottom here, make a little bit taller owl, maybe make it a little thinner. Yeah, I made it too tall, I think. And remember if it's bouncing all over the place, you can always disable your, your snaps so that you don't get too much bounce. And then I want to pull out a little tail in the back. So I'm going to find a spot kind of down here. And if I, if I use Z, enter, and then draw a little box, it pulls me closer here. So I can kind of judge where I want to maybe select this point and pull out. Maybe I want to select it a little bigger area. So that point is selected, shift click on that point, get these two, pull it out this way. Yeah, and then maybe I'll grab this point here, shift click and grab the matching one. You always wanna make sure it's matching. And then I'm gonna scale it out a little bit. So fatten up the tail a little bit more. Okay, it's just a very basic shape. This uh, owl, fun fact, is actually based off of one of my children's bath toys. So um, remaking this for the Rhino 6 version or Rhino 7 version. Um, and yes, this is uh, going to be using some sub Ds and other really cool new tricks in Rhino a little bit later. 
Okay, so I've got my basic shape here. And what I can do now is I can select my basic shape and I can turn the control points off by doing points off, enter. <clears throat> and now what I've got, I've got that shape. I'm gonna go to a front view and I wanna add a face to it. So let me go ahead and put on shaded view here. So I'm looking at it from the front. And now in order to uh, draw on the surface, I'm just gonna draw in the front. But first, actually one other thing, I'm gonna go to the top view here. And I'm actually going to move this owl back a little bit in space because from the front view, I'm going to be drawing along this line. That's just the, the, where the, the uh, construction plane is set up by default. And so I don't want it to draw in the middle of the owl where it would have. So now I'm going to go back to the front here and I'm actually going to lock the owl. So just type lock, click on it, enter or click on it first, type lock and hit enter. doesn't matter the order. Make sure my snaps are disabled for now. And I'm gonna draw maybe just a, um, a face, uh, just the eyes of the owl. And you can be creative, just make sure that it is a flat, continuous object. So we have the snaps disabled right now. If I put them back on in a minute, we can see. And I don't know if even if, um, yeah. So I'm gonna leave the snaps on actually, because since it's locked, it won't snap on it anyway. Okay. So maybe I'll, I want an angry owl today, you know, so I'll draw a straight line and then maybe do a curve from this point here. And go to that point there. And you want to make sure it snaps to the end point. All right. And then maybe I'll do an oval kind of shape for the eye. and trim it out so that it's stuck. It, it kind of gets torn down by the eyelid. So trim is the command. Select the object you're going to cut with, which will be this shape right here. Enter, and then click the shape that you want to cut off. Enter. Okay, so now we've got this basic shape. I can do other things like maybe I want to make it squintier, so I select the whole thing from left to right doesn't really matter because this is locked. I can go from right to left as well. And I can change the scale, make it more squinty, whatever I want to do, but you might mess up some of the lines. So I'm fine with it the way it is. I might move it over a little bit so it's less cross-eyed though. A little right there. Okay, the next step is to mirror it onto the other side. So we're going to use a new command called mirror, M-I-R-R-O-R. Enter, select the objects to mirror, enter, and then I'm going to select the point where I want to mirror from, and I want to draw it straight down the middle. And this is why we keep everything organized, because I've got this in the background right here where I can actually turn my grid snap on, and I know that my middle is lined up perfectly there. So I can snap it over. Let me do that again. Mirror, enter, grid snap on. Mac people, it's up here. Grid snap, snap there. Draw a line, this is your mirror plane. See, it says draw your mirror plane, start of mirror plane, I clicked. And then I draw straight down, click again. All right. So that's looking pretty good. Um, now maybe I want to um, uh, project these lines onto the object so I can start cutting things out. Or maybe I want to give the owl some eyebrows or something else like that. I could do that here too. Uh, but for the sake of just time, I'm going to go ahead and, actually, you know what? I don't want the, these eyes, really. I might just turn them a little bit. I don't know. Whatever. It's fine. It's missing something. I don't know what. Maybe I'll actually, let's do some eyebrows real quick. Turn off these snaps. Oh, grid snap's still on. Whoops. Do that again. One more time.
Okay. Mirror again. Good snap on. Oops. Mirror. Select the object. Grid snap. Okay. There. Now he's got a little bit of character to him. So, um, and again, if we look at it in perspective, you can see, like I was saying, it w draws those lines right on that construction plane on the red axis there. So back to uh, the front view. And all of these views are super important. Make sure that you are paying attention to the views. And now we're going to uh, use a command called project curves onto control um, or control points onto a surface. So uh, just click on this little guy right here under the standard tab. And then it says select curves and control points. I'll go from left to right here. And then select objects to um, project onto. Oh, first we gotta unlock, sorry, escape, unlock. There we go. Now project, left to right box, enter, click on the surface, enter. Okay, now if we look at it in perspective, you can see it projects it. And since this is all one continuous surface, it projects it onto both sides. So now we're just gonna go ahead and uh, left to right box and delete. And I like to put things on layers, old information and stuff in case I've got to revisit it. So I'm gonna select these objects and go over to layers tab over here and click on layer one, right click and say um, change object layer. And that'll turn it red to match this. And then I'm gonna change the layer name by clicking here and calling it Old Geom. Old Geom, and turn it off. So that way if I ever gotta go back to any of my old geometry that I use, like uh, I can do that, but I'm still keeping everything nice and clean. All right, so we've got our face projected onto the owl. Now let's go ahead and cut these things out of this object and then build on top of it a, um, uh, uh, some, some structure so that it looks like the eyes are sticking out. And the way we do that is by using the split command. So type split, enter, select the object you'd like to split, this, enter, and then select the cutting objects. Right, left to right box, enter. Okay, so that cut out this shape, this shape, this shape, this shape, this shape, and this shape. So now what we can do is we can offset these surfaces to make the shapes um, uh, stick out. So let's do that first with the eyebrows. Offset surface. There it is. Click on the surface to offset. I'm going to click on you and I'm going to click on you. And then I'm going to hit enter and we're looking at the direction. Yes, that looks like the right direction. If for some reason you're not getting that, there's a thing up here to flip all and that'll be handy later on when we want to recess things in. So I'm going to go ahead and let that offset and I'm going to type D for distance, enter. And I'm going to do, let's do an eighth of an inch, one slash eight, enter, enter. All right, so kind of some bushy eyebrows on this dude. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's continue. I'm gonna do um, the pupils and I'm gonna do them that same eighth of an inch. And then I'm actually going to do this part. You know what, actually I'm gonna, I got a better idea here. So I'm gonna offset these again, offset surface, this one, this one, enter. And I'm gonna do that one just um, a 16th of an inch again, okay? And then I'm going to do these ones, this one here and this one here, and I'm gonna flip them and I'm gonna do those in, inward. Okay, so that worked, but it's inside. Not a big deal. All you got to do, click on them, click on it, and then we're going to blow it up and delete the surface off of it. So click on the surface now and delete it, and you can see that's recessed in. All right. And I think that looks a little bit better. Um, 
but I also want to make this surface recessed in too. And since it's all um, broken up after I exploded it, I actually want to left to right box, select the whole thing and join it back together. Okay. And I can actually um, go ahead now and offset surfaces here. This surface, oops. Since it's all joined together, now it's not working. Okay, let, let's go back one more time. Control Z. And I have exploded it again. So now I'm going to offset the, um, offset the surface the other way. And I can join just this section. Join this to this and this. I just don't want to join to that surface. Or I can go left to right, select the whole thing to join. And then Control click or command click if you have a Mac to deselect those objects. And then hit enter, whoops, or hit join. All right, so now I still have those surfaces separate, which is what I want. And I actually am gonna join this whole part together just so it's all one fine piece. And then if I delete this off, you can see it's just open like that. Okay. So now let's offset surface, this guy, this guy, enter, flip all, so it goes in, and I'm gonna do a distance of one slash one six, enter, enter. Well, I guess that's what I did before. So let's do offset surface, flip all, and this time I want it to go a distance of one slash 32. Oops. One slash 32. Enter. Enter twice. Yeah, so now that only goes halfway in. Okay. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to recess this back a little bit, but it's not going to work quite the way you think it's going to because there's blank geometry in there. And you just basically need to take the parts of this that you need in order to fill in the, the remainder of it and to have it work properly. So let's do this. I'm going to Z, Enter, S, Enter with that object selected so I can rotate back into here. And we can see we need parts of it and we don't need other parts of it. So I'm actually going to explode this and I want to cut out this rim because this actually goes beyond it here. So split, enter, this object, enter with this object, enter. So what that should do is that should cut out a little, the outside rim here. And so I can grab onto that and delete it. Still there, but that's fine because we're going to delete more in a second here. So I do want to keep this part connected to this part. So I'm going to join that back together. And this is really where it's, it's a lot of fun, but you know, it's very creative as well, but you can get lost in these kinds of things. I'm just trying to make no overlapping duplicated surfaces and have it all work nicely. So now I'm going to click and delete off this part of the eye. And then I'm going to um, split out this section here, split this, enter with this, enter. Let me explode it. And then let's do that again. Split this, enter with this, enter. All right, and that worked. Okay, so now we've got this little rim here and we've got this eye all set up beautifully. So I can just join this to this join to this, join to this, join, 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 all one piece. I can tell by deleting. So if I delete the object and everything disappears, that means it's all joined together. Undo brings it back. All right, I'm gonna do that with the other side too. Um, but a little simpler concept here is actually dealing with just this section here. The goal with these are basically you want there to be no overlapping shapes. You can see how this isn't hollow in here and you can see this shape is recessed into here. So I can um, uh, 
probably even just Boolean union these two pieces together to make them one piece. So if I click on this and click on this and go Boolean union, it should, yes, it deletes that interior shape that you don't need. The key for this is, is in order for you to be able to 3D print your object, you need it to be a watertight solid all the way around with no like loose geometry on top of itself. So very clean NURB surfaces here. And that's very clean on the inside there. So let's do the other eye. Um, and I mean, technically you could just explode this and mirror it over to, to make it work. But if you didn't create a perfect even surface here, it won't work. So it's better to just do it the same way we did with the other one. All right, so I've already offset this and I'm gonna do a little bit of it um, uh, from this side. So let me just click on it, this, explode this so you can see. I don't need that top surface. And now I'm basically just cleaning up this interior geometry here. So I want to select this object and split this object, which is the larger surface that's too big. So split. Yes, that's the big surface I want to split. Enter with this. Enter. And then now it's split it into this little piece here, which is slag. We don't need it. We don't need it. Okay, so now I can um, go ahead and get rid of all my curves too. So if I go up here and go to uh, edit, select objects and go to curves, and then I can come over here and go into old geometry, right click, change object layer. All of those curves are gone now. I don't have to deal with them. And now let's go back inside here. So remember to zoom, Z, enter, S, enter. Now allows me to zoom that way. So I can select and zoom, okay. Looks all nice and clean in here. And I can just join the whole thing together. Click on it, hit delete. Everything but the eyebrow, which I have not Boolean unioned into it yet, came together. So let's go ahead now and Boolean union, all one piece, beautiful. So that's our angry owl so far. Um, you might want to add a little bit of curvature to things like fillet an edge or something. Let's see what happens here. If I fillet edge, let's do this bottom one right here. And let's do this one over here. Oh, first we got to hit our radius first. So radius is actually going to be, um, let's do a 16th of an inch. One slash one six, enter. And now click on it and click on it. Enter, enter. And it didn't work, but it did give us cutting blades. Like it just couldn't quite figure it out. So maybe we got to do 32nd of an inch. Usually if it gives you those blades, yes, I can trim it and slice it and make it work, but I don't want to. I want to fillet edge and just change the radius. Fillet edge. Next radius. One slash 32 will be our radius. And then select our edges. And that gives us a little rounded edge to the eyebrows. And I can do it on the top but you want to do it all at once. If you want to do every side, you can do all three sides at once and that will chain them together properly and create a nice form there. And maybe I'll do this bottom edge here. Let's see if this even works. Yes, it did. Just add a little bit of curvature. And maybe even that worked. All right, so I'm just redoing the same command. So basically the reason why I was capable of doing that over and over again is fillet edge, bring up the command, set the radius at 132, which is 0 0.03, blah, blah, blah. Click on the edge, um, enter for the radius, and then click on the edges. And I can do all of these edges, do that edge, that edge, this edge, this edge, and there you go. I did them all at once. And I didn't do this top edge because I think that might have gotten funky because of the distance between here and here. All right, let's go ahead and switch it into uh, rendered here. Have a look. All right, the owl's looking kind of like a, like a ninja owl or something. 
all right, i think that'll do it for now. see you in the next one.